Hey boys and girls, in this video we will be taking a look at the Ocean Swift Wavetabler. It is a uh, relatively simple wavetable patcher and editor. It allows you to edit existing wavetables, exchange cycles, um, and also build your own wavetables um, from your own single cycles. Also it allows you to rename um, cycles in the wavetable and export a text file with all the names, and it also allows you to interpolate between different cycle sizes um, that fit one, syn one synthesizer sp specifications uh, to be able to be used in another synthesizer with different uh, cycle size specifications. So I'm just going to go over the features. As I said, it's relatively simple. There's not so many controls or anything here, uh, just, just to show what this thing is capable of doing. So the first thing you will notice on the top left here, uh, you actually already noticed that I have a wavetable loaded here, right? Um, and the, the patcher, the wavetabler, uh, device works by splitting any s any wave file basically up to 100 cycles. So you don't have to fill all of the 100, but it allows you to make a wavetable up to 100 cycles. Uh, and over here on the top, you just flip the page between viewing uh, the cycles um, for the first 50 cycles and then the, the the last 50 cycles basically. So it's just a viewer over here. Over here with this button, you can um, clear the entire table, reset everything, um, and then over here you can reload uh, a different wavetable into here. Before we uh, go back and reload a uh, wavetable, I want to mention over here the cycle sizes. So as you can see, you can set it to different sizes, 128, 256, 512, 1024, and 2048. Now uh, that's just how most uh, wavetable synths work. These are the common, common window sizes for each wavetable synth. And what this basically means is if we take, for example, this uh, this wave file over here. This is a wavetable file. Uh, this is actually, I think, the one that was loaded over here. So this thing has 100 cycles, and the cycle sizes are 2048. Now we can actually view this over here. If we kind of zoom in over here, we can see that if I go to what I, I kind of marked over here, and let's find the zero crossing, and you will see that it is exactly at 2048 uh, cycles over here on the bottom. So for each 2048 samples, there will be a new cycle of this wavetable. Exactly just like that. So if we go over here and we would like to load this particular wavetable file, we need to tell the program that each one of these little slots over here has to be a size of 2048 samples uh, in order for it to, to correctly load and correctly split up uh, the file into, into the different cycles. So let's actually leave it on 2048 and go over here and load. Uh, this is from our own Ocean Swift uh, Wavetable Synths pack and we can load back this uh, wave mediation guy and as you can see it's yeah it's exactly the same file as over here we can actually see the first uh, three or five cycles over here there's like two ramps over here so these are actually you can see that it's exactly the same um, the same thing and that it has split each one of them into a, its own window now if we go onto the windows themselves, we can actually name this file. So we can call this whatever, Anasaw, um, Digisaw, I'm just making it up right now, you know, don't take it uh, serious, Bentsaw, whatever you want, you can name these tables. This just allows you to uh, later on export it as a text file, I'll show that as well. Um, but basically, uh, the options for the cycles themselves are uh, renaming. You can then right click over here, you can clear single cycles if you want. Uh, replace them um, by copying, let's say you want, I don't know, for example, you want this cycle to be the first cycle in your table, so you can copy and paste from one cycle to the other. And you can also load single cycles. So for example, let's say um, let's say I love all this wavetable, but I hate um, the first cycle and I hate the fourth cycle for some reason. So I can go over here, load, and again let's go to our uh, Ocean Swift example. So we have a bunch of single cycles in 2048 size and just randomly picking something and over here we have this like weird sort of square or sort of triangle and we can load whatever we want as long of course uh, just to mention keep in mind that you would we will have to let's say you loaded a 2048 file so all these cycles over here are on 2048 so if you're loading a single a single file into one of the slots then yeah then load the same thing so if it's 2048 then as you see I went to our 2048 folder of singles and show something from that because it fits the cycle size. So that's basically it for uh, setting the table. You can actually, like I said, you can clear everything and just, you know, basically load your own and you can even do um, 
you know, just a few cycles, you know, if you want the wavetable of, well, this is pretty ugly table, pretty ugly, um, pretty ugly cycle. But yeah, I mean, everything is kind of useful. Uh, so you can just, you know, you can load just four and you can export just four if you want, well, as many as you want, basically, up to 100. And then, um, of course, you have the save save functions. So I mentioned already the text. What this just means is that uh, if, again, let's just go randomly, totally randomly over here and rename these guys. And when I'm exporting, uh, before we get into the wave uh, exporting, if I have text clicked on and I click save, so let's just go back to folders. Um, I don't know, my wave. So it'll save these uh, four cycles. And it will also create a text file with the names of, of your waves over here. So this is useful if you want to kind of uh, keep a library of your cycles. And there might be synths that actually allow you to load uh, this text file. Small hint that we might do that in our synths um, eventually. So this is just another option. You can turn it on or off. If it's turned off, then it'll export just the um, it'll export just the the wave file and will not export the text file. Then over here you have smooth. What this does is it basically takes you know edges like over here on the bottom. It will kind of smooth the last uh, sample so that it starts and it ends on a zero crossing, unlike some of these guys over here, which again is also okay. These um, these cycles can be really neat for uh, modulators or anything like that. So depending on what you want the wavetable to later do, maybe you don't even want it to be smooth. You know, uh, you want these you want some weird tables and you don't you don't need the smoothing. The option is here, and uh, if you click it on, then it'll uh, pr perform that little smooth operation. Over here, you can uh, pick the interpolation, and this has to do with the cycle size that you set over here. And this is a, um, one of the highlights, or maybe the highlight for this device, because for example, let's go, let's do something like this. I'll show it with the example. Let's clear everything over here. Uh, let's go back to our um, full table. So this was the first full table that we had, and this is in 2048 size. I told it it's in 2048, and we also know, you know, uh, we showed it, we know it's 2048. Now let's say um, we have a synth that um, uses this table, like Ocean Swift synths. Um, our tables are 2048 and actually use this wavetable, but perhaps you want to use it on some other synth um, that actually has a different cycle size. So, for example, um, let's say you want to use it on a synth that has 1024 size or 256 size. So, all you have to do is you pick the, the new, new size over here. You pick your interpolation settings. Um, this just means like the, sort of like an accuracy or um, it defines the algorithm for the interpolation. Usually linear uh, works pretty fine. So, that's what I usually use. Um, you have other options near and cubic over here. You can choose the bitrate uh, for your exported file. So uh, let's just go for the example for 16-bit uh, integers and the sample rate. And um, in this case, we don't need the text again for the example. So um, we already have my wave. So this should be my cool wave. And and now we have the exact same table that was 2048 in 256. Let's um, you can even look at this. So if I take my cool wave and I load it back into uh, SoundForge over here. Now you will see that, remember over here, I I had to search for the zero crossing and we found out that it is exactly 2048 samples. But if I go to this guy and we want to take the first saw over here and if we zoom in a little tiny bit, we'll find a zero crossing and it'll be exactly on 256 samples. So this is pretty awesome. Um, we just interpolated it and the quality is pretty good. <coughs> it's a pretty good quality interpolation. I mean, the saw obviously looks fine. And you, um, now it's usable in whatever synth that is um, set up to work with 256 cycle sizes. Uh, another way to see this right now is if we leave this guy over here on 256, uh, sorry, on 2048, we clear everything. And now we're trying to load my cool wave, which we know is not 2048, it's 256, right? And look at how it loads it. Because it loads, um, for every four or more samples, you know, it loads, uh, it, it, it takes one cycle over here, which is basically a ton, uh, tons of cycles, right? It takes all this up to whatever is 2048 over here. And uh, this is already like 10,000. Doesn't matter, okay, it takes 2048 and just puts all of that into the first cycle. So this is wrong. But if we put 256 over here and then we load my cool wave, then it will load it correctly across all the 
all the 100, the same as if you take the original guy, put it back to 2048, and load it back in again. So this is the highlight over here. It allows you to use um, wavetables that you have for one synth in any other synth. That's basically the point of the device. Um, two additional small things that I would like to show is that just for fun, you can kind of colorize this device um, inside in different ways, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can colorize the wave itself. You can colorize uh, the cell area. And you can also colorize um, <coughs> the background of the cell area. Let's take something a little more, oops, like this, the background area. So just this is just for fun, of course. And um, you can also write from the synth, uh, the synths, write from the device itself. You can open the manual. I actually already had it open. Um, and it's a really simple manual. It just uh, goes over the the, f the functions that I've shown um, right now. Just a two-pager, and you can open it directly from the device if you need some uh, quick tips. So this is our uh, Wavetabler device. As you see, uh, as I've said also, it's very simple, but I hope that you saw from just these few examples how really powerful and useful it is, even if it's so, so simple. Um, we use it all the time for our creations and for editing wavetables, and uh, it's a great value, and um, hope you check it out. So thanks, guys, and have a good one.